Okay, I'm going to call the uh, meeting to order. Good evening and welcome to the October 2022 regular council meeting for the Village of Blacks Harbor. It is now 7.30. Uh, record of attendance tonight, we have all of council except for our deputy mayor. Councillor uh, Richie is on the phone, is that correct? Here's not here. Uh, number three is business arising. Any business tonight to, for you to bring forward? If not, I'll look for a motion for approval of the agenda tonight. Be it resolved, the agenda for October 19th, 2022, regular meeting of council be accepted as presented with the addition of item 13.1, amended purchase and sale agreement, ECW slash project village housing, and item 14.1, property proposal. Okay, we have motion on the floor, seconded by counts. Councilor Libby, thank you. Question or comment on the motion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary, and that's passed unanimously. Disclosure of conflict of interest. Anybody, this is your opportunity to disclose it, your conflict of interest. If not, we move on to approval of council minutes of uh, 6.1, regular council meeting of September the 21st, 2022. I look for a motion from the floor. Be it resolved that the minutes from the regular meeting of council on September 21st, 2022, as pre-circulated, be approved and filed. Councillor Libby's made that motion, second by Councillor Councillor Thompson. Thank you. Question or comment on that motion? All those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary, and that's passed unanimously. That brings us to staff reports, and I'm looking for a fire department report tonight. We don't have the fire chief here tonight. So I look for maybe if somebody like to, uh, Councillor Libby, can you see it? Can you I can do it, right? yeah. Uh, well, I can't see it well, but. Um, so my eyes are bad. <laughs> Screen. Which you get my age. <laughs> so uh, for September 2022, they responded to a vehicle accident, uh, three mutual aid calls, and public service calls, uh, three of those okay we have the report there i look for a motion from the floor to accept that report yeah, resolve the bill, sorry the fire department report for the month of september 2022 be approved and filed we have a motion on the floor seconded by councillor councillor okay uh, councillor wells <laughs> question or comment on the motion any question or comment on that uh, the fire chief's not here to ask him tonight. Uh, I'll, I'll go to the manager. Uh, the, the fire department, uh, Halloween's coming up here pretty quick. Is there anything special the uh, fire department will be doing for Halloween this year? Or? Uh, not that I know of. Um, they normally have more guys in the building the night of, just in case there's any calls. But other than that, I think they're good. Okay. Nice. If not, all those in favor, uh, in any other questions or comments? If not, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 And that's passed unanimously. Building inspector's report. Councillor Thompson, would you like to give that one to me? All right, so for the month of September, I don't see any value allocated for uh, any building permits that month. No. Okay, so year to date, Essentially, is twenty one estimated value of two hundred nine, just over two hundred nine thousand dollars. Seems low. It is low. Yeah. Okay. So, be it resolved, the building inspector's report for the month of September, uh, two thousand twenty two, be approved and filed. We have a motion on the floor by Councillor Thompson. Who would like to second that tonight? I second. Councillor Libby. Question or comment on the report? All those in favor of the report, signify by saying aye. All right. Contrary, and that's passed unanimously. Public, oh. Do you have a question? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Public works report, Councillor Ritchie, would you like to do that tonight? She can't see it from there. Or she can't see it. Councillor Wells, maybe you can re give us the uh, public works report. Is it big enough for you, Gary? You I've got it in paper. <laughs> oh, good, okay, you're good. Let her rip. Ah. <laughs> uh. Public Works uh, report for the month of September is as follows: uh, chlorine flow meter, chlorine flow meter filters building. How in the hell? Chlorine flow meter filters building and lagoon checks are done daily. Lift station checked every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. 
water tested on every second Tuesday and sewer tests once a month. Checked and collected trash in bins around the village daily as needed. Garbage collection done every Thursday. Recycling picked up as per calendar day on, uh, on Wednesday. Moving and snipping daily, weather permitting. Scrape and roll line ball field as needed. In sewer and water, uh, replaced a septic tank at 12 Meadow Lane. Delivered notices for to Fundy Drive for upcoming work. And uh, Q&M starting sewer upgrade. At the arena, uh, we did uh, the prepping for ice making. I guess, uh, is it Simo? Simo. Okay, Simco. Uh, was in the startup plant for our ice making and uh, first arena rentals. Uh, road work installed covered on Wallace Cove Road, trim trees at water tower requested by Connor for wireless signal. Trackless uh, Bloom Flail Mower had repairs, garbage truck repairs to the light and repairs to a hydro hydro hydraulic line. In miscellaneous uh, prep school field for Fog Festival, repairs to lawns. 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 Okay. Repairs to lawns due to the newly installed manholes, turned water off and unhooked at the community garden, and had the uh, QB meeting. Thank you, Councilor Wells. Is there, uh, I, what I would do at this point is entertaining a motion to uh, accept that report. Okay. Councilor Wells would like to make a motion. Yeah, am I supposed to read that? Yeah. Be it resolved that the building, no, I'm building. Be it resolved that the public works report for the month of September 2022 be approved and filed. Great. Thank you, Councilor Wells. Seconded by Councilor. I second. Councilor Libby. Question or comment on that report? There's a fair amount in there. So, anybody like to say, make any comments or questions? Have the uh, the ice. Um, went in the arena good? Everything, no issues? Yeah, no issues. Perfect. Uh, we had an issue the other day with one of the pumps to the compressor wasn't working, but that was, he had this report done before that, but all it's right. all been dealt with and they're still working on it. Yeah. Excellent. Didn't lose the ice. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. All right. Aye. Contrary, that's passing that was the, the CAO's report tonight. In, that would be me. Um, so in the month of September, the Patrick Connors Recreational Complex opened for the season. Um, we had many ice rentals. We're continuing on with our bubble skates. Um, we're calling them bubble skates because that that's what we called them last year. That's kind of to do some inflow, like fill all the ice times that are open. Um, the user groups get first priority, of course, like minor hockey and like the original six so they get priority on those and anything left over we're selling like surplus ice times for fifty dollars and those are posted on our village facebook weekly so if anyone's interested in getting any of those they get posted weekly and they they get snatched up really quick it's given us some extra revenue for the arena this year it's nice to have um we've also had ymca programming that's begun at the patrick recreational patrick connor's recreational complex there's different programs such as seniors cards. Um, there's multiple ones. We will be posting those on our Facebook as well. And the Y also posts those on their Facebook. Um, ongoing, we've got some grant applications in the works for upcoming projects. Um, maybe one for the trail that we actually have the access road on right now. Different infrastructure ones. There's been lots of planning for the upcoming amalgamation for Eastern Charlotte. There's been meetings with Jason Gadat and myself and Greg Lutz and the transition transition committee as well. We have been talking with CBCL, assessing our needs and our wish lists for the upcoming periods. And we're also working on the water project that we've discussed previously. We've had Glenn here from Community Development of Eastern Charlotte, Glenn Hawkins. He's helped us quite a bit in some of our property development and looking into different projects ongoing and want to thank him for all of his time and all of his help. He, he's been a great asset to us lately. 
and upcoming. So planning in quarter four to meet with Jason Gadet about transition things that we'll, we'll have a little bit more information on that later on in the meeting. Um, we've got gas tax funding allocations that need to be prioritized and we're working on our FCM asset management plan as well and ongoing Eastern Charlotte planning collaborations. Thank you very much. What I'll do at this point, I look for a motion from the floor to accept the, uh, the report. Be it resolved that the CAO's report for the month of September 2022 and to date for October 2022 be approved and filed. Councilor Libby, seconded by Councilor Thompson. Question or comment on that? I think it would be wise, Council, uh, or be nice, I guess not wise, but uh, to have the YMCA every so often come to Council and, and give a report to where they're using the um, village uh, property. It'd be yeah. nice to get an update how they're doing and progress and stuff like that sort of thing, too. I think the be the best interests of the uh, the public, the, the people in the village like to know how, how well it's going. and. Uh, and uh, sometimes people are watching this show, they can say, oh, geez, I didn't know anything about the YMCA. And it gets, it gets the information out there a little bit better, too, every way better. So, yeah, and we can ask Mervyn yeah. to come yeah. for yeah. that. Maybe they talk about quarterly when we. Yeah. 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 Any other questions or comments? If not, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary, and that's passed unanimously. That brings us to the uh, 7.5 Southwest New Brunswick Service Commission report. And who do we have to do that tonight? Well, Alex would normally. I can do it. He's not. Yeah, he's not. He's in a little bit. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe just, maybe just a little more. A little more? Yeah. Okay. And, uh, do you have a copy of it? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. So this would have been. Um, Created by Alex Henderson, he's our planning director for uh, Southwest New Brunswick Service Commission. So the planning update listed here on uh, Rural Plan Bylaw Amendment Z22, Keeping of Chickens, uh, may go for a third reading two weeks after the public hearing of, of objections, which was today, October 19th. Um, development update, so 24 building or development permits were approved for zoning compliance and or referred to the building inspector for issuance to date in 2022, um, which totaled $265,540 of construction value. One new commercial building permit application awaited approval due to a setback issue, but it was approved using section 17.15 of the rural plan for non-complying buildings. Um, no new subdivisions in report period. And that was submitted by Alex Henderson. Great. So at this point, I entertain a motion. Uh, be it resolved, the planning and development report and zoning reviews be approved and filed. Okay, that was um, moved by Councillor Thompson, seconded by Councillor. Yep. Councillor Wells, yep. Question or comment on the motion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary, that's passed unanimously. Eight is accounts, budget figures. I'll look for a motion from the floor. Be it resolved that council approve the budget figures for the period ending September 30th, 2022. Councilor Libby made that motion, seconded by Councilor Thompson. Uh -huh. Question or comment? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 And that's aye. passing nicely. Accounts payable, I'll look for a motion from the floor. Be it resolved that council approve the total of accounts payable paid or payable for the month of September, 2022, in the amount of 122000 four hundred and fifty seven dollars and fifty nine cents and payables to date for the month of October twenty twenty two in the amount of sixty five thousand seven hundred and thirty dollars and eighty four cents. Thank you, Councillor Libby, seconded by Councillor Councillor Wells. Question or comment? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 That's passing as tonight we have reading and petitions tonight we have big brothers and big sisters here. Tonight, the big brothers and big sisters. Who would like to go speak at that? We don't have. To be Dolores. She's not here. Dolores is not here. No. Okay, we'll move on then. That brings us to who else do we have? We have Laura Lee Carrier. Right. She's here for. Laura Lee, would you like to speak? Sure. Yeah. Just go right to the podium there, and uh, and that way the camera can pick you up as well, and and the and the, and the spin. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Oh, no. Nice to have you. Thank you, and uh, 
Thank you for welcoming me here. Um, we just wanted to, uh, my uh, friend and volunteer, I just want to introduce is uh, Eve Hughes. And she's going to talk a little bit in a minute just about some of the progress we made with this uh, awareness project. But uh, just wanted to, to describe uh, uh, an awareness uh, event that we're trying to promote. Um, it's called National Disability Employment Awareness Month. And uh, the project that we're kind of focusing on is called Light It Up for NDEAM. So Light It Up for National Disability Employment and Awareness Month. And so it's a one-night nationally coordinated special lighting event in recognition of this week, of this month. And uh, looking at the many ways that people who have a disability can contribute to businesses and communities across Canada and help com the companies that they work for to be successful and competitive. And so, as you probably know, we work uh, with the Community Living Centre, which is uh, funded by the Department of Social Development, and we work with adults uh, that have um, intellectual barriers and challenges to employment. Um, we've been around since 1984, and we've had a good history of putting people to work, but it's always a challenge, especially since the pandemic and a lot of businesses and, uh, um, you know, that people were working for, you know, took breaks from some of their employees and employees had to stay home. So, and there's a lot of new businesses, which we're getting to know new, new uh, business owners. A lot of businesses have changed hands. And so we're kind of, uh, you know, getting to know our employers and trying to get our people placed in jobs. So um, what we're asking is we're going to our local businesses, individuals, uh, municipalities. It, we're a little behind on this. Um, we did speak to John. I think he's aware of what this is about. But uh, we were just we're just asking asking people to um, recognize the event by you know dressing up in your workplaces in purple or blue, or putting some lights out in your businesses in purple and blue. And what the lights represent, the colors, purple represents creativity, harmony, and cooperation, and the dark blue represents trust, dignity, authority, professionalism, intelligence, and loyalty. So the NDEAM um, event uh, started actually in Ontario the year before last by a group called ODIN, which is the Ontario Disability Employment Network. And uh, they started out with this uh, idea and this project, and they were fairly successful getting a lot of businesses to partner with them. It's basically, the base is a simple um, uh, concept. It's just to start uh, the conversation or start people to ask questions, to think about people with disabilities contributing to the workforce. So a very simple concept. Um, so last year, a lot of uh, places in Ontario lit up, including Niagara Falls and Parliament buildings and all over, um, mostly Ontario. So we kind of picked up on it, and we're a little bit behind this year, but we thought, you know, we would just talk to as many people as we can, just get those lights up, get people participating and talking about it, and uh, really looking forward to making this a, a big event, like maybe one of our organization's main events that we can partner with other groups to you know, get that dialogue going and get more people participating. Um, so we have um, talked to local municipalities and businesses and our MLA, and like I said, we're just asking people to do, to do those simple things. Um, it is on Thursday, which is tomorrow, so it's not a lot of... Uh, we have talked to uh, groups long before this, before we actually came to formal council meetings, but... Uh, um, you know, as we know, lack of employment for people with disabilities is still a barrier. So anything that we can do that will just kind of spark the conversation and just get um, partners or communities partnering together is, is all going to be a, a big advantage to those, to those groups. So anyway, if you can, we also brought some lights. If you just want to do something simple and put some lights up for tomorrow night and have your staff wear purple and blue tomorrow. And next year we're going to come with... Uh, uh, a lot more activities and some contests and things like that and you know we'll probably be uh, a place where you can order shirts and things for your for your group so that's about it I thought I just thought um, Eve might like to give a little bit of an update because she's been doing a lot of the legwork for this um, Eve kind of showed up at my door about a month ago she's come all the way from BC and lives here now and uh, Eve has a very unique and very interesting work history and some amazing gifts and talents, especially, um, I think you're a microbiologist for one. And, 
and also um, has done a lot of work in the field of mental health and also uh, in job development. So I'm going to let you, um, Eve, just kind of let people know what you've accomplished in the last uh, month or so since we started thank this. You. And thank you. And thank you. Thank you. and uh, we would be happy to get you some lights or anything you might need. If you Excellent. I got lots of blue to wear. I don't think I have anything purple. <laughs> blue is okay. Well, thank you very much, Laura Lee, what, the work you do for our, our community, and I call our community, it's, a, it's all Eastern Charlotte, it's, it's wonderful, and uh, we're, the, the um, community is very fortunate to have you working with, with the disabled. Thank you. So thank you, Your Worship, the Mayor and Council for welcoming us. We did have a short, short-term start this year. Hopefully next year um, we'll be well ahead of it now that we're familiar with this campaign. And it is national across Canada. Um, I lived in Alberta for a long time. I think the high level bridge there is going to be lit up. So the idea is spreading from Ontario mostly. Uh, so we did, we had some posters and flyers and uh, we do have some businesses in St. George. I only got to the kitchen out here, but we did have a short time frame. So we hope next year um, we have acquired some lights that we can lend. Um, so next year we'd maybe be looking for businesses to make small donations, the bigger businesses, so that we have a fund because it helps people are busy going to find lights which were not many available. So I think there's an underlying uh, a theme here that's very important. And this, this is my retirement career of 16 years, actually. So one of the difficulties is that one of the major initiatives of the Community Living Centre is employment, which not everyone may realise. But the underlying issue is stigma, that people often don't believe that our participants and other agencies have many abilities. And it's difficult for our participants looking for work to go out to an employer. So the underlying theme here is that we engage employers up front. So going out and taking posters and asking people to put lights up and saying this is a national event, it's an annual event, you know, gives you a foot in the door essentially to start with the employer rather than sending a participant out, even with a, you know, a job coach. So this is also job development. It's marketing. Because all of the employers that we've talked to, the businesses, um, some of them may not actually have known that employment was a major goal for us. So over the next year, we'll be continue to talk to people. And the job development component is important. The first agency I worked for in Edmonton when I retired, and I, I did, it was full-time work, they, had, they were maybe had 20 years experience. So they'd established these very strong relationships with employers. And the employer is equally important as much as the employee. So our relationship will be with the employers and with our participants. So it's a longer term goal and some marketing as well. So next year we should be well ahead of it and yeah, have some fun also. Thank you. Well, thank you and if you don't mind, we'll, we'll take those lights and the guys get a chance tomorrow. I know tomorrow's garbage day, but uh, if they get a chance tomorrow to get those up before, before, before so we can see them tomorrow, tomorrow evening, that'd be awesome. Thank you for guys very, very much for coming in. Uh, uh, Just to share on the village page that we could bring awareness. Okay. Yes, Emily in, in our office, the executive uh, assistant is done up some, okay. some nice posts. Um, I just want to say that I've personally been involved recently with Community Living, and it, it's a great association, it's and amazing. there's so many yes. different things that are there for yes. people with disabilities. Just I've yeah, yes. recently been dealing with it on my own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I want to thank you both for yeah. being here and, yeah. and for the services you provide. Any other questions, comments from council at this point? If not, thank you very much for coming in. It's awesome to have you here. Yeah. yeah. Next uh, council is communication and correspondence for action. Uh, we have Eastern Charlotte Lions Club. Uh, project Santa Finds All the Children. That's, that's the name of the project, Santa Finds All the Children. 
We strive every year to give Christmas to all families and children in need of help from, from Santa. We provide a Christmas food hamper with turkey, dinner, clothing, and toys for children. We need your help with monetary donations or a new toy for a child or clothing of all sizes. Our Christmas telethon is Saturday, December the 3rd, live on air, where your donations will be acknowledged by Rogers TV from 1 to 5. And thank you for your generosity in helping provide for these families. And that is, comes from the 27th, the 27th annual Christmas telethon and from Karen Tracy. And last year, I believe, council gave a, a, a donation of $500, but I'm go, I'm, I go to the floor. Uh, what is council's wish to do tonight? Um, I would... I would be okay if we froze a thousand dollars. So, uh, you like, Councilor Thompson would like to make a motion. Yeah, sure. So, be it resolved, um, the council approved the request to donate one thousand mm -hmm. dollars to Eastern Charlotte Lions Club twenty seventh annual Christmas telethon. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. We need a seconder for that, Councilor Li Councilor Libby. Thank you. Question or comment on the motion? I I Councilor back Libby. you up. Yes, yeah, sorry. Um, the thousand dollars is a great idea, and it's a, it's a organization that gives directly to local families, and I think that's so important. So, yeah. I think Especially, I mean, we have last that. year has been seems really like, tough. Yeah, a tough year for Catch many. Thompson, you speak tax. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> this year has been a tough year, I'm sure, for many families with the price of everything. It seems going up. So, um, yeah, I feel like that. I feel like that's an appropriate number compared to where we've been in previous years. Okay. Any other questions or comments on the motion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Andrea, that's passing nervously. Area sidewalk issues. We have a, uh, a full two-page report on basically every street, and it's a good report by Dave Kennedy. I'm not going to take the time to read every one of these for, for expediency's sake tonight because we've, we've had a long meeting, but that is before you, Council. Uh, and I look for a motion on, on those issues, and I want to thank Dave Kennedy for, for sending that in. It's all different issues uh, uh, around Black Cyber and all the uh, sidewalks of Black Cyber. I look for a motion from Council. Be it resolved that uh, Council have Public Works look into these issues and uh, report back to CAO and, and talk about next steps. Councilor Libby has made a, a, a motion to to Pass this on to the uh, public works. Uh, would there be a seconder for that? Yeah. Councillor Thompson? Yeah. Question or comment on the motion? All those in favor of that motion signify by saying aye. 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 And that's passed unanimously. Now what? That brings us up to the holiday banner proposal from the Blacks Harbor School and Village of Blacks Harbor Holiday Initiative. My name is Jolene Amar, and I am the grade five teacher at Blacks Harbor School. This year, we are trying to promote an awareness of our community. In an effort to help our students have pride and appreciation for their community, I would like to propose a joint effort with the village. This holiday season, I would like to hold an art contest, specifically drawing, and the winners of the contest will have their art displayed on banners throughout the village. I understand that this may be a costly adventure, and that is why I'm requesting support from the council. I would run the contest in the month of November and have the winners chosen in time to have the banners created, created and hung. I will run the contest within a time frame that is outlined by you, so it will be completed in time. It is wonderful to see the banners hanging throughout the village. Our students and, and young of this community have so much to offer. To see artwork that they have created would fill them with pride, satisfaction, and self-importance. I appreciate you taking the time to hear the proposal and look forward to hearing from you. That's from Jolene Amar, from grade five intensive French teacher from the Blacks Harvard School. So uh, look, I'll go to the, the uh, council. To, to what is your wish to do with this tonight? I would make a motion. Uh to defer this request to finance committee and I guess request from the from uh, Mrs. Amer uh, the cost for this program so that we could d determine what an appropriate uh, donation amount would be. Okay, so you can see your, the motion is to defer it to the uh, finance committee. Mm -hmm. Okay, seconded by Councilor Libby. I'll That's second. Councilor. Question or comment on that motion? I think, I think we just need to understand the cost 
of uh, what that would be and kind of look at it together as a group and then okay. not to say it wouldn't happen. Okay. It's a great idea. Yeah, 100%. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. All right. Okay. 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 That's passing this thing. Okay, correspondence tonight. It's uh, got from uh, Premier, I think it is. Okay. This is uh, congratulations, the village of Blacks Harbor, uh, 50 years incorporated from 1972 to 2022. On behalf of the province, I want to offer our most sincere congratulations for your excellent co accomplishment. Blaine M. Higgs, Premier of, of New Brunswick. We also, also have correspondence from the former Camp Utopia. This is a lengthy letter. Uh, dear Mrs. Frost, the Department of National Defense, DND, has identified a quantity of lead-contaminated soil within and in, the vicinity, and in the vicinity of the backstop and stop butt berms of the former small arms firing range at the former Camp Utopia Ranges, uh, Utopia, New Brunswick. DND, Department of National Defense, must remove the contaminated soil as it poses an unacceptable risk of, to human health and or the environment. And due to the historical nature of this former World War II military training base, the firing range has been registered with the province of New Brunswick as an archaeological site BHDQ-21. In order to proceed with the work, DND has made an application for a site alteration permit to complete the soil re remediation by excavation and an off-site disposal. The province, through its archaeology and, archaeology and heritage branch, has requested that DND reach out to various stakeholders in the local area to, de deter to determine if there are any concerns or other interests in the re remediation work. The former firing range is rectangular in shape and approximately 1,000 meters long. It consists of a series of earthen berms, including a backstop and stop stop butt berm at the northern end and several s smaller firing point berms at varying distances to the south. The backstop berm is approximately 75 meters long, 21 meters wide, and 4.1 meters high. The stop butt berm is approximately 63 meters long, 8 meters wide, and 1.5 meters high. Several concrete structures are present in the vicinity of these berms, including the former ammunition bunker, a stop butt wall, foundations for targets, and, drainage and a drainage channel. Several metal features associated with the former targets are also present. The land upon which the firing range is located is owned by the province of New Brunswick and leased to commercial blueberry harvesters. Recent observations indicate that the backstop berm is being used by recreational vehicles and for target practice. Unexploded, unexploded explosive ordnance risk Reduction clearance was completed at the former Utopia Range between 2017 and 2020. Environmental, environmental site assessments and the risk assessments completed between 2020 and 2022 concluded that lead in soil within and in the vicinity of the backstop berm and the stop butt berm poses unacceptable risk to human health. Elevated concentrations of lead are attributed to historical mil military training activities, in particular, the presence of bullets and bullet fragments within the berms. Archaeological monitoring was undertaken in 2020 and 2021 during the previous, previous soil investigations. No significant archaeological resources were identified within the soils or in the immediate, immediately surrounding the back stop berm and the stop butt berm during either of these monitoring events. Description and plan of the project. The approach selected to remediate contaminated soil with, within and in the vicinity of the backstop and stop butt berms of the former small arms firing range involves UXO clearance and excavation of contaminated soil for disposal at an approved off-site facility. Excavated soil will be, will be screened to remove bullets and bullet fragments, which will also be disposed of uh, at an approved off-site facility. Clean soil within the berms may re remain on site. Depending on the volume and distribu distribution of contaminated soils, the needs to be removed portions of the berms may remain. However, this is yet to be determined. Heritage mitigation. 
Prior to the commencement of excavation activities, a detailed topographic survey of the backstop and stop butt berms associated physical structures and surrounding areas will be completed to create a permanent record of their size, shape, and configuration. The survey will include production of a geo-reference image, a topographic plan, and a 3D model. Although the backstop and stop butt berms themselves will be excavated during remediation activities, the associated concrete and metal structures will not be removed and to the degree possible care will be taken to prevent damage to these structures. An archaeologist permitted by, uh, permitted by the province of New Brunswick will monitor the, the remediation activities in accordance with the SAP. DND is, is seeking information, questions, or concerns from the public on the proposed re remediation activities. Please send any comments to the contrary below by November the 14th, 2022. If you have any specific information on the history of the former military base or any other element of the history of the rifle range at location, we would, be, we would very much appreciate your sharing that information with us. And that is from Heather Fenton, project manager from the Department of National Defense. Okay, I'll look for a motion from the floor. Be it resolved that correspondence for information be approved and filed as presented. Thank you, Councilor Levy. Seconded by Councilor uh, Thompson. Thank you. All those in favor of that motion signify by saying aye. 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 That's passed unanimously. 11, approval of committee minutes and recommendations. 11 1, pers personnel committee. CL Clerk Treasurer. Do we have that? Yeah. Do I have that letter? No, I, you don't need the letter. Um, okay. Okay, so I'll, I'll make this motion. Uh, unfortunately, it's not an easy one, but be it, res be it resolved. The council accept the resignation of CAO Clerk Treasurer Stacy Frost, effective Thursday, October 20th, 2022. We have a motion on the floor by Councillor Thompson. Seconded by Councillor. Yeah, I will. <laughs> you don't have to. <laughs> Councillor Louis. Okay, question or comment on the motion? I have a comment. So I just want to take this opportunity to thank you for all your hard work, Stacy. It's been a busy couple, of, well, year and a half, I guess, since we were elected, and I just you know, I can't uh, go without saying, you know, thanks a lot. And you've, uh, you really helped, you know, move us forward with all of our initiatives and we've had a lot. So yeah, best luck in all your future endeavors. Thank you, Councilor Thompson. Councilor Libby, do you? I'm happy that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Really have moved a lot of projects forward. That wouldn't have been possible without without your involvement and uh yeah really appreciate and has been a pleasure working with you okay no other comments or questions on that and that uh, motion all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye all right aye. That's passed unanimously. Um, before we move on i just want to say thank you to all of you you've been a pleasure to work with and yeah you've you've, you've helped me along my way too so that moves us on to appointment of clerk treasurer and, I'll, and uh, Jason Cadet. I'll look for a motion from the floor. Be it resolved that council appoint Jason Cadet as CAO clerk treasurer for the village of Blacks Harbor effective Friday, October 21st, 2022. We have a motion by Council Libby, seconded by Councilor Thompson. Question or comment on the motion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary, and that's passed unanimously. B is appointment of signing officer. I need a motion from the floor. Um, be resolved, whereas the Village of Blacks Harbor has appointed Jason Cadet as CAO Clerk Treasurer, requiring the municipality to make changes to their signing officers with the Scotia Bank and Credit Union as follows. That according with the Municipalities Act, Council gives authorization to CAO Clerk Treasurer Jason Cadet to act as a signing officer for the Village of Blacks Harbor, along with the already appointed Mayor John D. Craig, Deputy Mayor Adam Hatt, and Assistant Church. Clerk Treasurer, sorry, Assistant Treasurer, Bambi Scott Lovett. Check signing for the municipality is not to bear both signatures as, the, as the same at the same time of the Mayor and Deputy Mayor or the CAO Clerk Treasurer and the Assistant Treasurer. We have a motion on the floor by Councillor Thompson, second by Councillor Wells, thank you. Question or comment on that motion? 
All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. It's passed unanimously. Move on to number the next one, Scotia Bank uh, motion. Each bank requires their own motion. That's why there's two separate. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to start off with Scotia Bank, and I'll look for a motion for the floor. Be it resolved, whereas the Village of Blacks Harbor has appointed Jason Gadetta as CAO Clerk Treasurer, requiring the mun municipality to make changes to their signing officers with Scotia Bank, as follows. That according with the Mun Municipalities Act, Council gives authorization to CAO Clerk Treasurer Jason Gadet to act as signing officer for the Village of Blacks Harbor. Along with the already appointed Mayor John D. Craig, Deputy Mayor Adam Hatt, and Assistant Treasurer Bambi Scott Levitt, check signing for the mun municipality is not to bear both signatures at the same time of the Mayor and Deputy Mayor, or CAO Clerk Treasurer and the Assistant Treasurer. Okay, Councillor Thompson has seconded the motion. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 That's passed unanimously. Going to number the second one, credit union. I look for a motion for the floor. Be it resolved, whereas the Village of Blacks Harbor has appointed Jason Cadet as CAO Clerk Treasurer, requiring the municipality to make changes to their signing officers with the credit union as follows that according with the Municipalities Act, Council gives authorization to Clerk Treasurer CAO Jason Cadet to act as a signing officer for the Village of Blacks Harbor along with the already appointed Mayor John D. Craig, Deputy Mayor Adam Hatt, and Assistant Treasurer Bambi Scott Lovett. Check signing for the municipality is not to bear both signatures at the same time of the Deputy Mayor, of the Mayor and the Deputy Mayor, or the CAO Clerk Treasurer and the Assistant Treasurer. Motion on the floor by Councillor Thompson, seconded by Councillor. Second. Councillor Libby. Question or comment on the motion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Contrary, that's passed unanimously. Business of rising from minutes, anything right, nothing there tonight. Unfinished business, and that is 13.1, amended purchase and sale agreement ECW Project Village. Uh, we look for a motion for the floor on that. Uh, whereas council desires to amend the existing purchase and sale agreement um, to reflect a name change and extend the deadline for commencement of construction. Be it resolved. Um, the council agrees to amend the purchase and sale agreement with the proposed changes pending due diligence. Okay, we have a motion on the floor by Councillor Thompson. We have a uh, second, yeah. Councillor Wells. Thank you. Question or comment on the motion? Uh, we have Matt Rulo here from ECW um, slash Project Village. Um, the reason that we're amending this purchase and sale agreement is that it was made just prior to COVID and it didn't allow for them to get, get started on their construction. Um, also, they've changed their name. They're, it's not going under ECW, it's going under Project Village Housing. And if there's anything you wanna add to that, Matt? No, that's about it. It's, yeah, that's a change. And it's uh, basically, we're, we came to you in the spring and asked for a bit more flexibility on the timeline. And then uh, now that we've gotten into the process, just making a few updates, um, yeah, and it still keeps those safeguards in place where if nothing happens, it goes back to the municipality, so. Do you have a time frame of when construction may be started? Uh, yeah, our goal at this point is uh, sort of spring, early summer of uh, 2023. Excellent. And we were proposing to change that. It was June, but we think we should put it to November to allow for that construction. Mm -hmm. Development permits and everything may be held up with the amalgamation mm -hmm. with the Service Commission, so we just wanted to allow a little bit of extra time. Yeah. Okay, any other questions or comments on that motion? If not, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. All right. Aye. Contrary, that's passed unanimously. Thank you very much for coming in. Uh, that brings us to new business motions and notices of motion and property proposal. Um, this is where we move to closed session. Where as cited in the Local Government Act 68.1, a council meeting or a committee of council meeting may be closed to the public for the duration of the discussion if it is necessary, if it is necessary to, to discuss the proposed or pending acqu acquisition of a disposition of land. And I need a motion for that. Be it resolved that council moves to closed session at 8.13 p.m. Okay. We have a seconder for that. Council, yep. Councilor Thompson. Okay, now we're in closed session. I've asked the, uh, the, ca the cameras to be shut off. Okay, Council, we, we are back.
Uh, <laughs> consideration of bylaws number 50. No, we have to Rise report. and report. Oh, I thought you did. Yeah. That. I'm sorry. Be it resolved. Yep, sorry. Council re return and resume from recess to the regular meeting of council at 8.20. Council Libby, your microphone call, I think. Oh, where is our room? I think you're on. Yeah. Okay. We have, a, we have a motion on the floor, a second by Councilor Thompson. Sure. All those in favor of that motion signify by saying aye. aye. And we're back. 15, consideration of bylaws. 15.1, development incentives. Uh, A is to give third and final reading to bylaw 22.01. Uh, whereas council desires to enact a bylaw to increase the future economic and residential development in the village of Black Cyber. I look for a motion from, from council. Be it resolved the council give third and final reading by title to the amendment to the bylaw 22-01. A bylaw of the Municipality of Blacks Harbor Development Incentives. We have a second or by? A second. <laughs> Almost died there. <laughs> <laughs> um, question or comment on the motion? Uh, Stacy, uh, uh, Mrs. Frost would like to speak on that. Um, so, other municipalities are doing something similar to this, whereas we're giving developers an incentive to build within the community it gives them a bit of a break starting out and they can yeah it, it helps them out we actually it pays for itself in the long run because we're increasing our tax revenue um, for these developers to come and develop within our community great okay we have a motion on the floor all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye aye, aye. 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 that's passed 15.2 property standards this is a to give third and final reading to bylaw 22. Point, sorry dash 02 the minimum maintenance maintenance bylaw property standards i look look to council for a motion whereas council has deemed it necessary to establish standards for the maintenance of property in the village of blacks harbor be it resolved that council give the third and final reading by title of the amendment to bylaw 22-02 minimum maintenance bylaw property standards. Okay, we have a motion by Councilor Libby, second by Councilor Thompson. Question or comment on the motion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Passed unanimously. 15.3, village agricultural uses. Uh, a is to give the second reading to bylaw Z.2.2, a bylaw to amend bylaw number Z.2, being the rural plan for the village of Black Cyber. I look for a motion from the, from the floor. Yeah. So, yeah, I highlighted I this section and has taken into consideration oh, okay. views. But we're not doing the third. No, that's yeah. right. Okay. Be it resolved, Council give second reading by title to bylaw Z22, a bylaw to amend bylaw number Z2 being, being the rural plan for the village of Black Harbor. Council Thomas has made that motion, seconded by Councilor Wells. Thank you very much. Question or comment? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. aye. Right. That's passion honestly. So fifteen point three, we're gonna we're gonna let the fifteen point three go. Is that Yes, um under the advice from Alex Henderson, he right. said that we should wait and give the third and final two weeks. And that was in his report. Okay. So we'll we'll take that item off. That brings us to sixteen, which is counselors' concerns tonight. I'll start out tonight. Uh ladies and gentlemen, in just uh three weeks, uh remember stay will be here. Uh, please join with me in a moment of silence to remember our veterans for defending our freedoms and all soldiers who have paid the ultimate price for Canada. We thank the men and women currently wearing the Canadian uniform throughout the world in the name of peace. Pray for their safety, for they are, as we speak, taking their rightful place among the greatest generations that have ever worn our nation's uniform. I wish tonight to announce the uh, passing away of former Mayor of St. Andrews, Chris Fleming, uh, six days before his passing at the annual Union of Min Municipalities of New Brunswick Awards dinner, Chris was awarded the Raymond Murphy Memorial Award in recognition of his exceptional dedication to his community and the province of New Brunswick. 
I was in atten- I was in attendance of this award in Fredericton, which current mayor of St. Andrews, His Worship Brad Henderson, received it in on in his behalf. For Chris at the time was in palliative care. For those of you, those for those of you that don't know, Chris Fleming was the first on-air personality and one of the first people to be involved with community television out of St. Andrews, which then eventually became CHCO. Uh, Chris served at the same time as our mayor did, uh, Ken, Ken Hooper, here in Black's Haver. And this year, we lost, we had the loss of both of them, and uh, they were both two municipal icons in Charlotte County. Uh, this past month, I attended the Union of Municip- Municipalities of New Brunswick annual meetings in Fredericton on Thanksgiving weekend. It was very informative meetings, and the three major topics for the entire province were number one, housing or lack of, number two, RCMP policing, and number three, the restructuring of local governments. At the awards dinner, on behalf of the village of Black Sever, I think I have it here, I, um, I received from the president of the Union of Municipalities in New Brunswick the certificate of scroll of recognition for our 50 years of being incorporated as a village. And that is right here. I'll just show that so the camera can see that. This came from the uh, president. If we can get that. What I'll do, I'm going to take this. Uh, so next week is the week after next. We have the opening of the museum. This probably should hang November up. 1st. November 1st. This will be hanging up in the, uh, to take it to the museum, to hang up in the, in the museum. It we're going to have an event that night. Um, to commemorate our 50th anniversary at the museum. And we'll post all the details on the website and on our fe- Facebook. Your Worship, you might want to do that again and hold it up right now. Oh, can you, can can you hold it upside down? Yep. Did I hit it upside down? Yeah. No. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Can we get it now? Good. Oops. Uh, next, uh, now this is kind of odd. There's the, the, the um, I've been invited next week, and it's, it's called Fun Run. I couldn't believe that Fun and Run are in the same sentence. But uh, next week, uh, next week, the Black Cyber School is actually having a Fun Run here in Black Cyber, and I'll be attending that. And I'll, anybody else in the area, any counselors like to be part of the Fun Run, you're welcome to be here next Tuesday. It was supposed to be. This past uh, this past week, but because of the rain coming in, they they uh, postponed it to next week. So um, it was announced uh, this past month that the coronation of Charles III will be on Saturday, uh, May the sixth, twenty twenty three. Returning offices uh, for next month's election is currently open at the Old Kent Building in Saint Stephen. Anybody who is considering running must have their papers submitted by two p.m. a week from this Friday the 28th of October. And I also like to congratulate my daughter this past month on her, ma- on her marriage to Daniel Preston on September the 25th. And I would also like to congratulate Austin and Chelsea Dewar on the birth of their son, Nixon Earl Dewar on September the 22nd. I'm gonna to go to council. I'm all set, thanks. Nothing? Nope. No, it's great to have you here tonight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can- Councilor Wells. Nothing. Councilor Thompson. Okay, we're good. Okay, that brings us to what do we have left tonight to do. Does Councilor Ritchie have anything to oh, say? Oh, Councilor, I keep forgetting. <laughs> Councilor Ritchie. Yeah, I guess I'll just say to remind people of the food pantry there. I know uh, temperatures have been getting colder and I've seen some more traffic over there, so just to remind people of its existence. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Ritchie. Uh, that brings us to 17 question period. I'll go to the uh, audience. Anybody that have a question for council tonight? No, nothing. Uh, next meeting, a regular meeting, is November the 17th, 2022, at 6.30 p.m. Is that our last regular council meeting? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We still have the December oh. one, which is a day Oh, we still have one like in December, too. Okay, day good. Day day good. So at this point, I'll look for a motion for adjournment for tonight. Nobody you want to stay later. Do I'll you? move to okay. adjourn at six. Sorry, eight thirty-eight uh, p.m. Great. That's it for the night. Thank you very much.